Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a sneak peek number one, which we will cover the new game mode called the Clan Capital. This will be one of the largest updates in the history of Clash of Clans. This will finally allow players of all Town Hall levels to come together, build, and fight together as a clan. Speaking of all Town Hall levels, you must be at least a Town Hall 6 in order to enter the Clan Capital. Plus, you must be at least in a level 2 clan to access the clan capital. But if you see the airship floating at the bottom of your screen, then that means you can now visit the clan capital. But hold up, what is the floating island next to the airship? Well, that is called the forge. And that is where you can make capital gold. This is important because the capital gold is what's required to upgrade buildings in the new clan capital. There are three ways to earn capital gold. One, through the forge, which I'll explain just a bit. Two, capital raid weekends, which we will share in a future sneak peek. And three, season challenges and special events, which will be in-game events to complete and earn capital gold. But let's talk about the forge right now. Once you click the forge, it will give you the ability to craft capital gold. But you may ask yourself, are all these slots available for every town hall? Well, the answer is no. As you see here, extra crafting slots will open starting at Town Hall 9 through Town Hall 14. If you're a Town Hall 6, then you will only be able to collect the daily capital gold every 24 hours offered to you. But let's start crafting some capital gold. And you notice you have a few options available, either gold, elixir, dark elixir or even builder base resources you must be a builder base level eight in order to use those resources for capital gold crafting so that can be a problem for players who may have not upgraded their builder base but then again it requires 1.8 million builder gold and elixir to start crafting but it will also require a free builder yes you need a builder free for every capital gold craft. If you're out of builders, you will not be able to craft any capital gold. What about lower town halls? Starting at town hall nine, you'll unlock one crafting option, which will only yield you 1000 capital gold for 3 million loot. But you also can't start using dark elixir to craft capital gold until you are a town hall 13. But this process can be sped up using a builder potion. But most importantly, there is no cancel button when you start crafting. So you either have to wait until a finish crafting or spend gems to finish it to free up your builder if you need to use them again. Now that we learned what capital gold is, what can we use it to upgrade? Well, we must use it in the clan capital. So let's now take the airship to the clan capital. Welcome to the clan capital. Wow. You'll notice immediately at the top is the capital peak followed by all the locked buildings which are the capital districts. In order to unlock those, we must upgrade our capital peak. So let's do that. We initially start off with a few defenses here, but the main building is the capital hall. This is where our capital gold comes in. You'll notice at the start, there are two ruins which you must rebuild. So let's do that. If you notice at the top right of the screen, it shows my total capital gold available. Since I have more capital gold available than required for this ruin, then I can instantly finish this upgrade. Yes, upgrades in the clan capital don't take any time. It only requires the resources and they will instantly finish once everything has been contributed. Now that we upgraded both ruins, we can now upgrade the capital hall, which requires 50,000 capital gold to do so. Since I only have 8,200 capital gold, that is what it will say to contribute since I don't have enough to complete the upgrade. Now the capital hall will remain like this until either clan members help contribute or I contribute the rest to help finish it off. Some of you are probably asking, does the gold pass lower the capital gold required to upgrade or unlock each ruin? The answer is no. A gold pass does not have any effect on the clan capital. It only works on your main village, but the gold pass does affect the forge and requires less resources and time to earn capital gold. Another new thing coming with the clan capital is called reputation, which is an XP system for the clan capital. You will see your reputation at the top left inside the clan capital when you go into a base, or you can click on your clan and navigate to the clan capital section, 
to see your total capital contribution. Your reputation and total clan contribution will follow you to every clan you go. So don't worry about losing that and it resetting. Since I'm in the dev build, I'm going to give myself a million capital gold. So I don't have to worry about making it all the time in the forge for this video. Remember, this is just the developer's build, which is only available for approved content creators to make helpful videos to teach the viewers. Now that the capital hall is upgraded, the first district of Barbarian Camp is now unlocked. But you notice if we click on the army camp that all the troops are grayed out. This is because we have to rebuild the army camp ruin to unlock the first troop in the district. Now that we do this, the army train button on the left side appears and we can now cook the super barbarian and super archer. But let's not stop there. Let's rebuild the others in the district, which includes the battle ram barracks, super giant barracks, and two more ruins of defenses. But if I want to upgrade my district to level two, I can't do that until I go back and upgrade the Capitol Hall to level three. But we can't upgrade the Capitol Hall to level three until we unlock 19 more buildings or traps in any district. So let's do that. Let's click the little eye at the top to see what ruins we have to unlock or upgrade. Let's go ahead and upgrade the 19 buildings now. And we can go ahead and then upgrade our Capitol Hall to level three, which will require 75,000 capital gold. Once we upgrade to Capital Hall level three, we now have unlocked the Wizard Valley District, which if we enter, we can see a few cool buildings, including the spell storage, which upgrades your spell capacity for capital raids, meaning you can hold more spells. Stay tuned for a future sneak peek about that. The heal spell factory, which unlocks the healing spell and the jump spell factory, which unlocks the jump spell. But if you notice, several of these items can't be unlocked until you upgrade your district hall to level two. But the district hall can't be upgraded to level two until you upgrade your capital hall to level four. So you can start to see how each of these districts and capital peak influences each other. But if you look at the troops in your training bar, you will notice they don't have any levels associated with them. That means they are level one and need to be upgraded. In order to upgrade the troop levels, you must upgrade the building associated with that troop. For example, if we want to upgrade the Super Barbarian to level two, we must upgrade the Super Barbarian Barracks and now you can see the Super Barbarian is now level two. So instead of manually upgrading each building, let's go ahead and max everything out so you can see it all in action. What are the max levels for the Capital Peak and District below? Well, the max level for the Capital Peak is level 10 and each district maxes out at level five. It will take many years to reach this point. I can only see full clans of 50 people to ever max out, and that will be taking a few years, if that. Good luck maxing out in the clan capital. Here is the max level 10 capital peak. Notice the amazing artwork, but right off the bat, the capital hall has a circle around it. That is because it's essentially a large eagle artillery that does splash damage to ground and air. But let's look on the left side with all the defenses you already know from the main village and the builder base. We have the multi-mortar from the builder base, bomb towers, crushers, two inferno towers, hidden mega teslas, some air bombs, air defenses, regular cannons, and several trap mines. But on the right side, we have new defenses within the clan capital. These include a super wizard tower, which only hits a single target ground and air a giant cannon, which does splash damage, two multi cannons, which do burst fire, eight rapid rockets, which also does burst fire. Then we have the spear thrower, which is a single target defense targeting ground and air. Next, there are two new rocket artilleries, which does splash damage to ground and air. And finally, the two giant blast bows, which does area splash to ground and air 3.5 to 14 tiles away. Then at the top, we have three posts, which are the Raid Cart Post, Super Giant Post, and Super Dragon Post, which act as defenses on your base, essentially are like the Guard Post on the Builder Base. And finally, we have the new traps, which include the Zap Trap, which does 2,000 damage to a single target five tiles away, and the Log Trap, which does 600 splash damage through nine tiles. Now we are on the Max Barbarian Camp District, and let's focus on the troops available from the district. First, we have the Super Barbarian, then Sneaky Archer, Super Giant, Battle Ram, and finally the Minions. 
Notice each barracks is level five, which means that the max level for those troops are also level five in your army. Then finally, for the Wizard Valley District, we have the Spell Storage, which at max has a seven spell capacity, the Super Wizard Barracks, Heal Spell Factory, and a Jump Spell Factory. Notice the Jump Spell takes up two housing space and the Healing Spell takes up three. These spells work exactly the same as in the main village, so there's no special changes there, except for when you use the spells, they will still be there for the next attacker. If you drop a heal spell, it will stay in the exact same spot for every attacker after you, but a jump spell will only stay on the map for the very next attacker after your attack, then it will disappear. No pun intended, now let's jump into some attacks and show off these troops. Let's click the army button at the bottom left of the screen, and now it's time to select our troops we want to use. Since we are maxed out, then we have a full 250 camp space available. You'll notice we see other troops, but we are not covering them in today's sneak peek. Be sure to subscribe and come back tomorrow for those, but let's focus on these troops here today. Let's add about 11 super barbarians to the army, then let's add one sneaky archer, but you notice that the army space jumped up by 10. That's because when you deploy the sneaky archers, they deploy in a group of five, taking up two camp space each. So if I grab three sneaky archers, that will be three groups of five archers. Now let's add one battle ram, a super giant, and about 10 super wizards, and fill the rest with minions. But we notice minions are the same as the archers, that they deploy in a group of six minions and not individual units. Now it's time for the spells. Again, the other spells will be covered in future sneak peeks, so subscribe for those. But we can grab two heal spells, or we could grab one heal spell and two jump spells. So let's go with that. We're in this attack, and I'll show you how these troops work. So if I drop the, like anything, I want to provide a little bit of tanking, I can go ahead and drop the super giant, drop some barbarians, and they're going to be used down here. But the battle ram, that is going to go run for the wall. And watch if I drop these minions, right? It drops in a group, just like the sneakies are, sneaky archers as well. We'll drop some more of you, drop some of the uh, wizards. And then let's go drop a whole jump spell right there. Some more sneakies. Oh, you know what I probably would be good is if I used a heal spell. Let's go ahead and do that. And we got air defenses across the board. And where can the minions fly? Because if we're gonna if we're gonna drop them, let's see, will they fly across? Yes, the minions will fly across the, the pond, the water, the lake, whatever you want to kind of call it. But keep in mind, as I'll attack this base again, you're noticing that the area of deployment is opening up as these wizards and troops are taking out more of the base around as they go. Because what I was initially, I could only drop in this bottom side down here, but as I destroyed more of this, then it opened up more towards that left side and a few more minions, boom. So these super wizard tower doesn't hit one unit or one troop at one time. It will hit one, but chain through them. So something to keep in mind as well. And so I have actually 12 more minions left because of the two. So. If we drop all these guys right here, will that single target Inferno absolutely roast it? Um, yes, it does. But so we took out that part of the base and let me, you know what? Let me jump, drop the jump spell right there and let's see if maybe we can drop a troop to jump over there. So we got our second attack now against this base. You can see that the spells are stared there and let me go ahead and drop a barbarian. No, he won't jump over the lake right there, but you can see these bridges and there's a wall piece that's right there kind of stopping from going into the middle so we see that won't work but if i drop a jump over here will the super giant take the jump yes so the super giant will take it what about if i drop one of these uh okay there oh that will take the jump right there very interesting drop some of you across and then you can see a lot of these defenses uh in action here drop some super wizards that i'll chain you up through there drop a heal spell for all you oh we got an air bomb Okay, we got some air bombs, drop some more minions. We're going to be pushing our way around, but you can see this is how it is. You and your clan mates are going to be coming together to try to take down these bases that have all these mega defenses in. This is a completely maxed out base right here. So you kind of get an idea of how it will work, but it will take a very long time 
to get to this point. And now I'm in the third attack here. I wanted to show that the jump spell that I originally placed in over the lake is no longer available because the jump spell will only be there for the ver very next attacker and it doesn't last for the everybody else. But the heal spell looks like, oh, it looks like it's the same thing. So the heal spell, or I guess maybe all the spells are that way. They will only be there for the next attacker and then disappear after the fact. The other new resource within the clan capital is raid medals, and those are earned by participating in capital raids, which we will be discussing in a future sneak peek. But the amount of medals you receive is dependent on how many districts were destroyed, as well as how well your own capital was able to defend against the enemy attacks. You can use your raid medals for two things. Let's go to the main village and take a look at the first one. And if you go to the trader and you click the raid medals tab, you can see you can get gold elixir, even dark elixir with raid medals, and then some build builder gold and elixir potions, and then some wall rings. But the big thing is the clan castle request. So we have the normal request for your re reinforcements, or you can go and reinforce with your raid medals you can click this icon and then each one of these troops is a certain cost for your raid medal so for example if i want to get a super minion i want to get a inferno dragon i want to get a super giant i want to get a, a sneaky goblin a super barbarian right there and let me go fill up with a stone slammer i can go ahead and get uh lightning 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 maybe like that and click confirm and it'll cost me 54 raid medals you can see how much raid medals i have left now I'll go and click buy and then now in my CC are all those troops, all those super troops, which I did not have to get donated, which is really nice. I'm on my town hall 10 right now and notice this is only a level two clan. And let me go ahead and reinforce and let's take a look at what this looks like. You can see that the wall breakers are level eight that are going to get filled up. But what are what level are my wall breakers in my account? I currently have level six. So it looks like they are still getting a plus two bonus uh, to you, even though I am in only level two. So it does take effect. So, it, they, so you don't have to be in a 10 plus clan for that to have effect. So for example, a wizard is level nine and my current wizard level is only level seven. So yeah, that's what it looks like. That's pretty cool. But what about a siege machine? So I can even fill up with a flame flinger. So I don't even have to be a Town Hall 14. I can get any Siege Machine I want as a Town Hall 10. So hopefully that answers a few of your guys' questions that you probably may be wondering. I know this was a very long video, but the final thing to cover in this update sneak peek is some balance changes. I'll post them up on the screen here. But what you'll notice is the balance changes are affecting the spam air dragon attacks by buffing the air defense, seeking air mine, and the defensive builder repair speed. Then also, at the same time, lowering the Super Dragon DPS and the attack range. Also, the Unicorn is receiving a nerf by decreasing its healing speed, so let's keep note of that. And finally, here are some bug fixes and game changes, but the most notable is the air and ground troops will no longer target buildings from the middle, which means that this can have a huge influence on troop pathing. This just might have to be a video all by itself, to talk about that.